Um, we've got one more special presentation. Um, and as, as the day has been spent with people, as they say, from the front line, the practitioners, the people who are living and breathing the issue of dealing with youth and dealing with youth and youth violence, we have a special presentation from um, an artistic point of view because culture has been mentioned all day as being sort of the thing that has run throughout all of these issues. And uh, we've got Flores Pena, he's going to do a special presentation on how he uses culture in his art class. It's also tied into the exhibit that's in the, um, that's in the hallway out there. And it's also um, a representation of the, the tremendous amount of work that he's been able to get done um, with young people who are products of homeboy industries. And for those, of you, <laughs> for those of you that um, are here in Los Angeles, I'm sure you've heard about them. And if you haven't, um, they're, um, they're a fascinating, fascinating uh, group. And uh, they're doing some wonderful work. Um, and their art is amazing. Professor of Liberal Arts and Sciences at Otis College of Art and Design, and a Bruin. So I'm home. <laughs> um, today's talk is about how do we go forward. And uh, while the, the, the PowerPoint gets set up, let me talk a little bit about what I, what I do. Uh, Otis College of Art and Design uh, started to create a program called uh, Integrated Learning. The idea was to bring our students out, uh, outside of the college from uh, the ivory tower, you know, these are designers, fine artists, uh, illustrators, and take them into community environment so they can interact and in many ways experience the, the world outside of the academic point of view. And this is where my idea came from because originally what I, want, what, I, what I was planning to do is that I wanted to donate my time as a cultural anthropologist to donate my time uh, to homeboy industries, in other words, to bring my talents uh, to, to, to teach those who had no ways of uh, achieving or reaching the college. But at the time that uh, at the IL, the Integrated Learning Program came, uh, my chair said, why don't you do the, your, your idea with Homeboy? Why don't you bring it up and make it a course? So that's nice. I was planning to do it for free. Now I'm getting paid, and I get to choose my students. So I decided to uh, call the class Homeboy History. The idea was to, number one, to bring people from Homeboy Industries, the interns at Homeboy Industries, and give them the college experience, bring them to college. Because one of the great, the, the great problems and criticism that we have is that, well, there's a lack of access. There's a lack of opportunity. What will happen, what will happen if we bring them to college? Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a fantastic amount of creativity and art in, in, the, in the community. And, Especially in Boyle Heights, where I, uh, where I was focusing my 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 uh, efforts, so uh, the class developed out of that idea. So my 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 point, of, my working question was, what will happen if I if we take trained artists and designers, fashion designers, computer animators, fine artists, and everything else that we have at Otis, and we create a conversation? between these trained artists and untrained artists in the community. What will happen if we put it together? Thank you. You have to excuse me.
Hey, here's Peter Gonzalez. Okay, here it is. All right. All right. So that's that. So our objective today is basically to, 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 to identify and define what we want to do, what I wanted to do originally, because there is a need in our community. And in this case, I have bragging rights, because I not only work in Boyle Heights, uh, and with Boyle Heights, I live in Boyle Heights. And my great issue is that many of our young people in our neighborhood will graduate when they come from our neighborhood. And as soon as they graduate, they have one foot outside of the community to move to their good neighborhoods. So my point was on the contrary. They stay in the neighborhood so the kids know that, yes, you can have mechanics and you can have everything else, and you can have a professor that gets out of his house every day to go to school. And you can, there's nothing wrong to be a mechanic, nothing wrong to be anything else, but there's nothing wrong to aspire to be something else. So our idea is how to create this partnership. Of course, the class was very clear. I intended to do what I said originally, to, to move this, these communities together and do it in that way. So my vision is that I realized that art is an essential part of gang culture. It is there. And that many of the artists are self-trained. And there's a lot of culture, and there's a lot of communication, visual communication that takes place with this artistic expression. So, you know, we needed to, to, to put this conversation together in many ways. So if we can create an environment in which both groups can converse, and we can engage this, this conversation, then we can deal with the issue of identity empowerment and deal with the issue of the political violence. There's a lot of things that are self-perpetuating precisely because each community is not talking to the other. So that was my vision originally. And the fact that I was living in the community and I knew what was happening didn't authorize me to do this because this is not my culture. If you're wondering my accent, I'm Puerto Rican, so I have no, I have no way of understanding you know, this culture. I lived there 18, 18 years. I know everyone in my community, more or less. But you know, I, my, my, my upbringing in Puerto Rico was different from the, from the thing I was seeing in Boyle Heights, even though my son went to school uh, also in Boyle Heights. So anyways, we have two positions and two points of view. And, we just, and I decided that it was time for us to put together these two communities. And this is what, uh, what the class is all about. Let's get the, the self-trained artists and let's get the trained artists together. And let's see what they can come up with, what kind of a project, idea, solution they can design using art as a mutual platform of expression. So of course the institution, you know, the first thing that you need to do, do is you need to, to meet the, the institution, Homeboy Industries. You know, many of these, of these students have never been to the east side of the city because everyone is on the west side, the good part of the city, right? And the first thing to do is to take them into Homeboy Industries where they can understand what is happening here, what, the, what, what Homeboy Industries is all about, the population it serves, and the ideals that promote uh, Homeboy Industries. Um, this young girl here is my student, Monica, and she's uh, the designer of the uh, domestic violence posters outside. And my joy and pride. So we have also the idea that there's a lot of, uh, there's a discourse of identity running within Boyle Heights. The idea of Americanismo, Indigenismo, this idea of indigenous pre-Columbian root that is very part of the discourse and people are not really paying attention to this. So let's take this, this conversation to the streets. Let's get him out of the, of the classroom. Let's get him into Boyle High to explore art, self-expression, explain this cause, not only from the academic point of view, which is me here, right? But also from the point of view of the community. So the first thing we did was I spoke to uh, Fabian Devora. He is uh, the, the young man there. Uh, he's my TA in the class because you know he's the one who keeps me honest. You know when I when, when I don't know what I'm talking about, he said, "Well, you know homies do this and they do those, they don't do that and the whole business." So he's my TA. He's my mentor in the class. So I just brought him on board to give me that other point of view. So when I wanted to take the class. To the, uh, to the projects, the first thing I thought was like, well, you know me. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, let's get on the bus, I 
let's take the student to the bus and ride it to the project and stuff like that. And said, I don't think you can do that. Uh, you have to talk to people to get into that project. And I'm not the person. But I can put you in touch with the person who can, who can let you know. And lo and behold, you know, he did. And we were able to walk around the project, engage people from the project to come and explain to us what life in the project is and the type of issues that are happening from the other side of the battle of the, gun, of the police gun. In other words, the people who get the guns pointed at them. So this time, you know, we're listening in the middle of the battleground, but there's no bullet flying. We, we were able to take our students there, and they're talking, they're conversing, they're saying, okay, uh, so-and-so fell here, and this is his story. And, you know, it's not the same. When you can talk to the person, say, yes, I was the person who that got shot at and the whole thing. And you don't get this point of view unless you get and engage the community and the people in the community. So of course, you know, these are artists. So, you know, they are gonna go for the art. They're gonna go for the idea of representation, issues of representation, issues of how a community under siege you know, represent itself and codify its own history in the face of everything. But you can see a mural and you can get the obvious, but the inner story, the codified message, you will not get it, not even if you're an art historian, unless you talk to the people who created that mural. And we were able to engage those artists and tell us, tell us exactly what they're saying. What they're saying that is not part of the official discourse. Of course, the idea is to go beyond the politics of cool, to go the idea of the glorification of violence, to go the idea of the, uh, of the pants falling you know, below the, the waist into problematic areas, you know, to go beyond the idea of what do you do when you're trying to get tough because it's the only way that you can survive. And this is, uh, this takes us to all places, churches, to see art like this, I said, Beauty of the Light, really problematic, uh, by uh, Mexican American artist George Jeffers, in which he reinterprets the whole icon of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And the, the Virgin of Guadalupe becomes not only the mother of the Mexicans, but it's a pieta that is not, is not holding the dead body of Jesus, but the body of a dead homie. And there is a codification message right there. There's, a, there's an issue of representation there. So it's not the Mary of the altar, it's the Mary of the streets. And that, and that Mary is every mother who has not a child to, to, to gang violence and, and urban violence. It's, it's a wonderful mirror, you should go and see it. So of course, we have to, to, to get beyond the political cool. So you know, this is one of my students, and you know, he was very, he's a, a, a very well-known graffiti artist, and he's going to ball high, dude. I mean, you know, this is cool. So, but you know, new to the class and to the topic. The problem was that our, that our good friend is in from the head to the toe. When he got into ball high, police stopped him because he was in, and he came to the class fuming because he was stopped by the police. They said, well, you're not on the west side any longer. In here, you are a strange guy with new tattoos. He must be a gang member. And we need to know what are you up to because if you are in, you're up to no good. And he was stopped. But anyways, uh, this is part of the whole idea. You know, you get to Boyle Heights, and Boyle Heights is a community. It's not that you're going to wild Apache territory. People are not mocking each other. People are living there, and people have a culture to talk about. Now, the transformation of the class happened when then, when then identity issues come and homeboy meets Otis. When the conversation begins and the trained artists talk to the, to the self-trained artists, and when that, they start developing and questioning, what can we do to put our talents together to solve this situation using the best tool that we have, which is our art, emphasis on our, okay? So, here it is, the conversation. Posters. How do you communicate? This is a visual generation. So this is a poster that plays with the idea that jobs, not jails. The transformation, the issue of transformation, where a homeboy transformed from a, a, the, the vision of the not good whatever member of society to a contributing member of society through art. 
And of course, I'm pretty sure that Da Vinci wouldn't uh, uh, object to the treatment that my students gave to his famous uh, drawing. <laughs> so, one of the first things that they did was to put together teams. And you're going to see out there a, a model that was developed. Uh, they developed a, a doll, uh, a, a homeboy and a homegirl, that will be uh, designed to represent the, this concept of the homeboy. And he and she will be dressed as homeboy and a homegirl. But they will bring also other outfits that can be changed into what they have, they want to become. So each doll comes with a, with a story. How, what, how they got into the street and how they were planning to get out of the street. So in this sense, you're not elevating and making fashion and ex the other exotic, which is something that I tell my students. We don't want to be part of the wow effect. We want to be able to move this from the glorification of the, uh, of the, uh, of the failure to the glorification of change. So this is uh, the packaging element, that's uh, Dominic, and that's Liana. And of course, uh, since homeboy industry serves every ethnic group in Los Angeles, Dominic is an African American, Liana is a Latina, and who knows what can, but the idea is that they will produce this project and present them to homeboy, so to help homeboy advance is outreach policies. They, this is not for Otis, this is for Homeboy. This is our contribution to the, to the Homeboy agenda. So these are uh, projects and prototypes because all of us know that the, the, the biggest part of any product is design, getting it to fruition. So they are producing this, here's the prototype, and then producing it is, is Homeboy issue. So there was another a magazine. The idea was, what do you do? Let's create a magazine, a magazine that can shock, but at the same time educate. And you know, the idea is, and this is all uh, our students' uh, point of view, the idea that the magazine will serve to help people communicate. And you can see the transformation using the, the whole, uh, the poetry that written by Homeboy in Ken uh, script, and also then you can see the transformation. The idea is to, to see visually this, this movement from one side to the other. That there is a change, that change is possible if you want to and if you provide the, 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 the platform for that change. So tattoo is one of the things that is very, is, is, is very big right now. I mean, you know, one of the great issues that we have, and many scholars argue, is that tattoo has become the big issue it is now because our society, and one of the most problematic aspects of our society, is the absence of significant rites of passage for our young people. That we don't have any rite of passage that is significant, that, that involves that transformation, and tattoo sometimes, like everything else, can go away. So, of course, the idea is that homeboy industries have a program called tattoo removal, just two. So, as as scholars, we say, okay, let's document these tattoos. Let's ask the question, why did you get this tattoo? What was happening? Just to, to bring those stories out and document and put together tattoo with the story. So even though it is a problematic issue of gang member, it's still, you know, some of the finest tattoos, let's face it, come out of the prison. And unfortunately, with all the negativity it is, so the student developed a whole book in which they extrapolated the body, left the tattoo, and treated the tattoo not as a glorified issue, but as a work of art that can be coded, decoded, and recoded in many ways to understand what the message is. So of course, the first thing is to get a, a, a prison style tattoo done. How do you, you know, the question was, how do you get a tattoo in jail? So we got, you know, the ballistics of it, <laughs> the logistics, you know, and here it is. So that many of these students don't know. I mean, we hear about all this, our students don't know, and this is the, the shock value of a one-to-one -one experience. It is the real, it's getting down real with this issue. I never been, well, I was arrested in Cuba once, but that's a different story, but I never been arrested. <laughs> and I was arrested for a different thing. 
But, uh, you know, I've never been arrested. I don't know what the jails look like at all. But anyways, you know, how can I talk about this? And that's where my mentors come in. They can tell the real stories. They can say, this is what happened. This is what's going on. And this is why I got this tattoo, because this is a way of me of communicating without having to, you know, start speaking and talking aloud. My body talks for me. So we got that. And here are some of the tattoos that we started to, to, to collect. And let me tell you, it was a value to us because it takes a long, a long time and a lot of convincing to get the homies to take the shirt off to be, to be photographed for a book by some college student that they have never seen and they have to be convinced that this is for a cause. So it, 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 it deals with the issue of trust. How do I, because this is not just photographing a tattoo, this is exposing myself in more than one way. So this is an issue of identity, especially in a culture in which posing, image, you know, we hombres don't do that, which is my favorite phrase. So in summary, it is important to explore this, these issues because what we realize is that instead of being antagonizing the gangs, these are real powers. And someone said to me today, gangs are not going to go away. Of course not. As long as the, re of the reasons and the roots of the evil that, they were, that, that forced them to come into existence uh, still are there, gangs are not going to go out. But what happens if we engage them? There's real power in gangs. And there's a lot of bright people in there. So instead of antagonizing, what Otis College is doing and what I wanted to do and along with homeboy industry, is what if we engage those who are the power brokers, those who are the people who, can, who know the community, what will happen if you engage them and use those talents to bring change? So it's not a matter that this is a, a, a professor trying to tell us and lecture us about the right and wrong. That's not it. But there's issues that are important in the issue of gangs because they exist as a response to real or perceived problems. It may not be real for you, but you don't know what is happening in the street if you don't live there. And why many programs don't, don't work? Because no program will ever work from the outside. You have to engage the people who are affected. And I'm not saying that because I live in Boyle High, I, I, I'm a better professor. I'm saying that because I'm in Boyle High, I know who to approach, and if I don't know, at least I know what to do, right? And people know me, you know, uh, one day, one of my favorite stories, and I'm going to mention the person, I was going to Hollenbeck, and, uh, and a good friend of mine called me on the phone and said, you know, Dr. Gross, what, what are you doing at, uh, at the police station? I was on my way to, to, to work, and I saw you. I said, no, I'm in school. I just came to, to pick up a paper. I said, is anyone messing with you? I mean, this is a community issue. I'm part of the community, and I'm part of the community, and because I have invested in the community, I, I, I'm part of the community regardless of where I'm coming from. So it is part of this. We have to engage people from within the community. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Because it will sound like you're coming in very preachy with the wrath of the righteous to talk to those losers who don't get it right. And unfortunately, it's very nice for you to come in at 9 o'clock and leave at 5 o'clock and leave the mess behind until tomorrow. It's different if you live in the community and you have to be accountable to that community because you have to live there. That is the change. And of course, the issue of identity and spirituality and the semiotics of it. There are many signs and symbols painted, pasted, tattooed, you know, all over the place, and no one is paying attention to that. Those signs and symbols are saying something. And if I don't know what is the message, I, by golly, I better find out someone who can teach me and train me regardless of how many PhDs I have. Because I don't know everything, even though my son doesn't know that. <laughs> so rise of passage. For many people, what do you have in gangs? The idea is that gangs hold the power that they hold within its community because they they use the power of the rite of passage to create a very powerful bond. A bond that is just so powerful that even though you may try to get out, you find people who always relapse. 
So my point of view is, if you want this to work, you have to provide a stronger, deepest, and very clear rite of passage that can take the, the place of the previous one. Otherwise, you will never break that cycle. Because the idea of identity that will say that, yes, there's a problem of violence, that you know, they, you, know you get kicked, but then you get loved. And if that's the only thing that, that you experience and you associate being first gone taken through pain and then taken to the place of love and acceptance, that is the biggest right that you can experience. But it's not the only one. So we cannot, when it comes to Latino, which is a highly spiritual community, and this is one thing that people don't realize. Latino gang members are highly spiritual. And you can only have to see the many tattoos and the many things. And look at any car. You know, I tell my students, stand on any corner in Boy Heights and see the hanging altars on the rear view mirror of every car of every, that every homie owns. You have the posted up rosaries, crucifixes, Marys, uh, scapulars, and every single type of religious whatever. Now, you look at the person, and you know that that person hasn't been to church since the day he was baptized. But those symbols say something, and they mean something. So it's a highly religious and spiritual community. So what will happen if we can reinterpret and re-engage these issues? And as much as we abhor spirituality, you cannot write it out of this environment. You have to go there, not to preach, but to understand what that spirituality is doing there. Because the Virgin Mary is not there as the Virgin Mary, Little Guadalupe is not there as the Virgin Guadalupe. That is everyone's mother. And Jesus is not there as Jesus, that every homie has been abused, neglected, and dead in the street for his fault or not, but that's what it is. So, Signs are, are markers of identity. You know, if you look at these issues and at these markers, never mind the Catholic Church, never mind the Catholic iconography, look at the political statement that they convey. And then you will see that it's not an issue of the Ten Commandments of the Bible, it's an issue that it is a cry for help, that there's a possibility that we can see, but we need, to, we need to be able to decode these signs and symbols. And if, we don't, if we're not able to decode it, we are not going to be able to get anywhere. So when you put artists together, and they start talking about each other's ways of identifying pain, frustration, neglect, then you establish, a, you create a language that goes back and forth in a very creative way. So there are issues of, uh, of, 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 of uh, confrontation. Issues in which it's telling you, like my, one of my favorite, you know, the, the smile, now, smile now, cry later. And you know, people say, oh, that's a gang tattoo. But what is that saying to us? What is it saying to us about this mask that this community is putting up? Uh, because we know that a mask conceals, but it reveals as much as it conceals. So we have to look what this mask is, what's behind this this gang mask. There is a possibility of achieving a, the next level. So this class tried to really engage all these issues in many, many dimensions. So we have a community with divided identities. American, they're born in this country, yet they find meaning also outside of the borders of the country. There are issues of religious identity, ethnic identity, historical identity, and it's a pendular movement that goes back and forth, back and forth. And you have to understand, if anyone wants to deal with this problem, you have to know that you're not dealing with misguided American youth. You're dealing with a youth that has his identity scattered across the hemisphere. And if you don't understand that, you may be treating one part and the other part is wounded. And still be wounded because it's not been taken care of. So above all, the idea of this class is to provide a platform that is intense, as intense, if not greater, than the platform 
than the one the population is coming from. So since education is an issue, I'm an educator, that's, that's the only thing I can do. I can only teach, right? So my, my only contribution is to start this dialogue. By no means this is, this is uh, the only idea. This is the way I was uh, willing to engage myself and expose myself to these ideas. So you have to provide a platform that is bigger than the one the population is coming from. You have to provide the experiences. Because we, uh, you know, Andrew was asking earlier this morning, how do you do when you get a student from this community and it's not, it's not happening, it's not happening, it's not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do, even though it has the talent. This is the problem. But it's not Andrew's role to do this. It's everyone's role. It's everyone's role to to engage these issues and provide the experiences. So my idea is. If we bring the homeboys and the homegirls to Otis, and they want to pursue their career in art, at least they know, they've been to Otis, they know what a, a college class is about, they know what an art school work is about, can you do this? And if they can do it, then let's, let's begin the process. If you cannot, at least you've been there, done that. And it's not a problem that, oh, no one has given me the opportunity. So we open our doors to that. And then, it also provides a, 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 a level of self-esteem because you don't understand until you see it. For all of us who have been to a higher educational institution, it's, it's not clear that, you know, the first day that you came to school, the first day that you came to college, and the whole thing is just a wonderful day. But when, when you, the last time you were in school was when you were on your 10th grade, if you got there, and you haven't been to school ever. And then you get invited, because of your talent, to sit down, as many of, of, of my interns have said, among artists. It's a validation of talent. It's a validation of, 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 of contribution. There is a process. So of course, you know, there's an idea that you feel validated because you have something to offer. And hopefully, you can come back and do something with it. So in, in, in summary, what the uh, Homeboy Histories class has done is to create this, this, this platform in which students, formal, formally trained artists, with ideas and dreams of making a change, because you know our students want to go out there and do something that is positive, something that can affect positively the, the society in which they are and then taking the other and just stop calling it the other and calling it brother or sister or friend or chum or whatever you want to call it, but seeing them at the same table. And it's not a problem that I know more than you, it's like we're going to educate each other. So it comes a moment in the class in which I will have the class will be lecturing because I have to lecture because that's what the school wants me to do because I need to train, but I lecture to the whole class. You know, the, the homeboys and homegirls that come to us, they take the 15 weeks with us. And I lecture to both of them. And they are just one group. And they, after lecturing, then I let them go to do what they do naturally, which is to get to the library last year. And it was one of the most intense projects along with the, with the domestic violence because after the, at the end of the class, we always have like a round table discussion. And Lynn is the, you know, the, the Asian girl that, that was sitting uh, with the African American, so Lynn is our student. The other ones are the two homeboys and the homegirl. And Lynn said at the beginning, she said, "You know, I will never ever dream of sitting together with uh, with her because you know they didn't even know the name." But they came up with this idea. Lynn is a toy designer. She designs that, but you know, they were, she was trying to design something that could be used. And then the the the, the interest from homeboys said, "Like that is not going to work because you know the tattoo is in the wrong place and." The, the thing is in the wrong place, we don't dress like that, we don't do that. And then they were able to come up with a design that, that spoke to the culture, right? And now, uh, we only, I only could bring Liana because Dominic is in another exhibition. But uh, they work together, developing the strategy, they develop the packaging, they develop the, 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 the whole process. So yes, it was, it was a, a cooperative uh, effort between Homeboy and, uh, and Otis too. Um, so I, I just want to make a comment now that I know that. I think that the, the, um, the concept and the idea of bringing the artists together from sort of the community and the trained artists and 
incredible idea. Um, one of the things that just concerns me, just in looking at that particular product that you came up with together, um, is the image of the woman versus the male image. Um, and I'm wondering if you could discuss that in the process, because you see the, the male image is completely clothed, even wearing gloves, where the female image is, is rail thin in this little tiny mini skirt, yeah. I'm hardly wearing anything with high heels. And when you talk about self-esteem and you talk about um, promoting images of, of uh, cultural exchange, I, 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 I have a 12-year-old daughter, so uh, things like that tend to, to spark up for me because I don't want her to suspect that the only place that she can look for salvation in toys is through images of Barbie-like uh, physique in women, and I just wonder what kind of message that promotes back to your community. Yeah, the, thank you. Uh, the toy was designed to come in with the cliché. And then, like I said uh, in the presentation, is that it will come with all the things to change them to what they are, to what they wish to become. So they, uh, the idea is that you get the cliche, what you expect. And then the only way that you can, that, that you can do is that you have to change it to, they have a career, they, they come with a, with a resume. And the idea is that they have a career that they are aspiring to, and then you change it to that career. That's the whole idea of the toy. So in many ways, uh, what, the, what the team decided was to challenge the stereotype and put it there, and that this stereotype can be changed and transformed. And uh, the homeboy and the homegirl, you know, is, they're not gonna be homeboys and homegirls forever. That there is, that they have aspirations and that they can get out of that cliche and become something. That's what the whole thing is, is engaging the stereotype and then just debunking it. Yes. I just want to say thank you because you did. You know, a lot of the program, not only the rapper program, because that's my boy too. I mean, and we all said I'm a rapper. But uh, thank you because it's not many programs that get the cross pollination of establishment and the community. You know, it's so separated. It's always about sex with it. You know, like I was saying, sometimes that dog's a great idea. Sometimes you're into potato heads. You know, you want to into potato heads because you want to. You know, you want to. You put glasses on. Give me your card. We will we'll can use anyone here. But at the same time, you know, this is the same issue. Uh, Homeboy, it was developing a domestic violence uh, uh, program, and they needed posters. So the idea was the same thing: putting together illustrators, putting together people who knew how to put these uh, images together with powerful meaning. But one of the great issues that, that we had, and you know, probably Monica can speak better than I do, is that they were trying to, uh, to address an issue that is very, very problematic in Latino culture, same gender violence. And how do you do that? Images, man. And, and then you have this ambiguity of images that you don't know who you're seeing, but if you know what you're looking for and what to look for, you can find yourself there. And this is the whole idea of these processes. So, you know, we're just trying to, uh, again, you know, opening the door to, to change and opening the door to establish this conversation because it, no program, no idea will work if it's imposed from the outside and from the top. It has never worked, it will never work. And, you know, living in the community for 17 years and being part of the community, my problem was, you know, how do I give voice to those who have not? And this is my, my contribution. May not be the most perfect one, but it's the best I can do to the moment. So thank you. Just one question. In, in terms of the projects that get created between the self-trained artists and their students, do you have a say in what they do, or is it that they come together and decide, and you stay out of it? And then how long has the program been going on and you know, if there's some sort of maturation or graduation, how many of the homeboy students yeah. have come through that? Yeah, uh, the, we have no limit on the homeboys except that, uh, that you know, uh, except the class number. Uh, the class is, uh, is going for two years now. Uh, I'm the taskmaster. I'm the one who, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not an artist. I, don't, I can't draw to save my life. I'm the one who will provide the, 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 the academic platform 
you know, the, the, the issues, the, the understanding of issues, social empowerment, uh, the, the, all, all the academic aspects that they both have to listen to so they can come up with a, de a design that is relevant. And if you're interested in that, uh, if you go to, to the website, odis.edu, and you go to portfolio, and then you, you click, and it goes uh, by name, and you type homeboy, you're gonna see all the portfolios and all the projects that have been developed for two years. There is no graduation. They have, the, the projects are given to homeboy. It's for homeboy to decide if they want to produce it, if they want to, to deal with uh, last semester, they, uh, we decided to, a group decided to create a, a project called uh, Fashion for Our Homeboys. It was a bunch of fashion designers and, a, and, a, and a, 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 another design student. And they decided to create a whole line of clothing using those signs and symbols, right, in ways that could be manageable. So you're gonna see some of those, and they use the, the poetry from one of the homeboys that it was written down on the garment with designs that were, for this particular time, used from uh, Teen Angel magazine. So my point is I just provide the academic and the intellectual background, they provide the art, and I make the stupid question because if, they, if, if, I, if I have doubts and issues, your audience will, because I'm the audience, they're the artists, so when I see it, if I don't understand it and they have to explain to me, there is a problem. So the idea is that uh, they do what they do best, which is design based on each other's experiences. My, my role there is as a cultural ethnographer. I provide the, the, the discussion board, uh, the, the issues that come up with com communities in transition, empowerment, uh, transnationality, all these issues that are important to understand why people behave the way they behave or why people uh, react to each other the way they react to each other. So once they, they get all that lecturing and all that, all the field trips and all the discussion and all, all the explanations, then it's time to sit down and create. And I just go around the group asking, asking the questions. I, I, you know, I say, you know, that doesn't work. Why don't you try this, this idea? Why don't you go this way? So, you know, I, once they get into the creative aspect, my role is to make sure that they don't uh, objectify the other, that they don't make the other exotic, you know, to get them out of the politics of wow. That the, it has to be a project that can be, that can elevate the dignity of the idea that homeboy, is try, homeboy industry is trying to create. That's why the, the class is called Homeboy Histories. Because it's based on the history of each one of the homeboy interns that come to class with us. And I have enough material to, to feed Toby that for six months. I mean, you know, that because, you know, this is second, we're going on our second year. I have, this is not even a quarter, a quarter of all the projects. It's, it's like yeah. huge, it's yeah. like huge, you know, like those two, those are brochures mm -hmm. for domestic abuse and uh, children, uh, children, parent-children relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, they're getting, I know. It's but, hard. Yeah. but I, lo I love the whole idea of engaging all these icons.